Jim, would you be up for some quick fire jargon busters to get us all up to speed? Brilliant, brilliant. So first of all, what are GHGs? Well, that's greenhouse gases. So those are the set of gases that uh, are emitted into the atmosphere, uh, primarily through burning fossil fuels, and they cause climate change. We're talking about CO2, uh, so methane. CO2, sorry, I forgot to name them. So <laughs> CO2 is the big one. Um, and then um, methane, CH4 as it's called, if you remember your chemistry. And that's natural gas, the gas you use for cooking or heating in many homes. That's the next one. And then there's a number of others. Water vapor is actually a greenhouse gas, but we can't do a lot about that one. Uh, and then there's um, hydrofluorocarbons and a number of others. So the CO2 and the Methane are the two big ones that really cause most of climate change. Methane also burped out by all the millions and millions, if not billions, of cows on our planet. Indeed. Under the livestock. What does PPM mean? So uh, PPM is parts per million. So that's basically the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So at the moment, we're over about 400 PPM. That's way above the kind of pre-industrial level, which hovered between 200 and 300 ish. It fluctuated. And that's basically 400 parts of greenhouse gases per million parts of molecules in the air, basically. So it just shows you the concentration of those gases in the air. What is the IPCC report? The IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. So that's a panel of scientists which have been set up by the world's governments to basically review and report on the science of climate change. So they issue these reports every few years. And at the moment, they're in the process of releasing their sixth assessment report this year and some of it next year. So it's basically the state of climate science. And what's coming out of it so far is a rude awakening. It's a pretty tough picture, you know, as they've released the sixth assessment report on the, you know, what's happening with climate change. And that's quite very, very sobering indeed, you know, stronger than the last one. And then next year you'll get reports on things like, well, what do we need to do to actually tackle climate change? Interesting. Um, Good, good. Um, What is the Paris Agreement? So the Paris Agreement is one of the agreements made by uh, 190 odd countries in the world. It was agreed in um, uh, at COP21, so six years ago now. And it basically said that we want to keep global temperatures well below two degrees. It had within it these voluntary uh, pledges by governments around the world to make uh, further steps to reduce their emissions. So it's a really important milestone along the way of negotiating what to do about climate change. Um, what is the significance of 1.5, 2 and even 4 degrees Celsius. So 1.5 is in the Paris Agreement and it says we'll make every effort to get close to 1.5, certainly well below 2 degrees. So those are basically the average global increase in temperature from pre-industrial levels. So 1.5 and and 2 and even 4 doesn't sound like a lot, but we're already just over 1 degree and we're seeing the impacts we're seeing with the floods and the fires and all the other things happening. So even keeping to 1.5, we're going to have some significant impacts. Four is is off the chart in terms of the kinds of things we'd see. So we really need to, you know, that's why all the focus is on keeping well below two, as the Paris Agreement says. OK, what does carbon neutral mean and how is that different to net zero? Is net zero actually real zero? Can all that be problematic? <laughs> Unravel, please. Short answer, yes, it can be problematic. These terms are often used interchangeably. So carbon neutral basically means getting your emissions as low as possible. And then for any emissions that are left, then you basically are taking emissions out of the atmosphere, either through things like planting trees or artificial engineered means, capturing CO2. Net zero often means the same thing, but often it's applied to all of the greenhouse gases. So to the methane and the other gases as well. And again, it's a rather similar thing that you get your emissions as low as possible and then you take emissions out of the atmosphere to balance those that remain. It's not the same as real zero. So real zero is stopping emitting, um, uh, which is very, very hard, particularly from agriculture. And if we want to keep flying from air travel. You're doing really well, Jim. Just two more for you. What are nationally determined contributions? So that's part of the Paris Agreement. So these are the voluntary pledges that governments are make, made. The jargon's terrible because you wouldn't know that from the from the title, but but it's basically <laughs> pledges. What they're going to do by 2030 in terms of reducing their emissions. And it's a real contrast to the previous way of doing the international agreement, which was basically telling countries what to do. Mm-hmm. So, so that's what they are. OK, and uh, last but not least, what's the difference between climate mitigation and climate adaptation? And which one is more important? 
depends which country you are. So mitigation is reducing emissions, adaptation is adapting to the climate change that's happening. So if you sit in the UK, most of our focus is on mitigation, although we do have to adapt to things like sea level rise to uh, different weather patterns. If you're sitting in countries that I work with in sub-Saharan Africa, such as Zambia, the big emphasis is on adaptation because climate change is already affecting things like their agriculture, uh, their water availability and all sorts of other things. And their emissions are very low at the moment. Okay, God, you're good. That was brilliant. Clarified a lot of things. Thank you so Thank much, you Jim. Much.